One of the jobs of the Victorian Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning, or DELP, is to undertake ecological research. However, this is often not an easy task, particularly when attempting to survey wildlife. Techniques include trapping and the release of an animal, interpreting sign left from an animal, such as footprints, scats and digs, using hair snaring devices that trap hair which can then be examined and the species that it belongs to can be identified, and recording the audible noises of fauna such as bats and birds. However, in recent years, heat and motion detection cameras, otherwise known as camera traps, have become the tool of choice to detect terrestrial animals. Camera traps are essentially digital cameras that are triggered automatically by a moving heat source, such as an animal moving within range of the camera sensors. The cameras can record multiple images, both day and night, and may be left out in the field for up to months at a time. Camera traps have been used within Australia since the 1930s. These were somewhat primitive and were homemade. Camera trapping really took off in the late 1990s, initially developed for use by deer hunters. They have become digitised, smaller, more robust and reliable with longer battery life over recent years, and many are tailored to the needs of the wildlife field researcher. Camera traps often allow us to survey a larger area for a longer period of time, because camera trapping usually reduces labour costs and time, making them more cost effective. Most importantly though, the ethical impact of surveying fauna is negligible with cameras. Of course, deploying the cameras still involves a certain amount of work in the field, often in remote and difficult terrain that may otherwise be undersampled. The cameras are attached to a stake or to a tree. Usually a lure is then placed a few metres in front of the camera. This may be a stinky meat bait used to entice carnivores, or a bait designed to lure in herbivores. The camera's field of view between it and the lure is cleared of debris and vegetation to allow a clear shot of the animal in order to facilitate identifying the species. The camera trap is then left to do its work. Once the cameras are retrieved from the bush, the pictures are downloaded from the memory cards and we can look through them to make a positive detection of a species. Camera traps are used frequently by the Arthur Ryler Institute for Environmental Research, or ARI for short, which is the ecological research arm of the department. The first ever project at ARI to use the modern digital camera trap at a landscape level was in 2006 in order to study the status and the distribution of the spot-tailed quoll in eastern Victoria. Cameras proved to be the most cost-effective tool to study this endangered carnivorous marsupial mammal. Another early project included the novel use of camera traps to determine the distribution of the threatened long-footed potteroo across its entire range within Victoria. The long-footed potteroo is a medium-sized forest-dwelling mammal belonging to the same order as the ubiquitous kangaroo. This was undertaken in order to determine the effects of timber harvesting on the habitat requirements of the potteroo and to improve the targeting of fox control, an introduced predator of this native animal. In this project, cameras were directly compared with hair snare devices, and cameras proved to be a more robust and economical tool to use. This ARI project was possibly the first in the state to use camera traps over such a broad area in order to get a meaningful data set that we could use to inform policy decisions. Another project looked at the effects of scavengers on the carcasses of introduced wild deer. Camera traps were placed at samba deer carcasses that were strategically located within the landscape to mimic carcasses left by deer hunters in the wild. We used the camera data to determine the degree of scavenging by different guilds of scavenging animals, particularly by wild dogs and dingoes, red foxes and feral cats. Camera traps have been used before at an individual scale for examining the use of carcasses by scavengers, but this was likely the first ever study that used cameras in a systematic way to collect data suitable for scientific analysis. Cameras were also used successfully as a tool to examine techniques to survey the small and otherwise cryptic endangered smoky mouse in the Grampians and Central and Eastern Victoria. Even though the mouse is very small and rarely seen, camera trap detections were higher 
than either trapping or using hair snaring devices. A current significant project is underway studying the Leadbeater's possum. This novel project uses camera traps that are placed in trees in order to record the distribution of this critically endangered possum. This data will be used to help increase protection from timber harvesting for this little possum, which is Victoria's faunal state emblem. The Arthur Rilo Institute for Environmental Research will no doubt continue to use camera traps as one of its key field research tools in detecting terrestrial fauna well into the future.